Amy. I'm Hunter. And this is the West 7th Wool Podcast. This is the podcast about our local yarn shop in Fort Worth, Texas, West 7th Wool. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Hunter? Not a whole lot. The days just tend to merge. It's it's a little bit like Groundhog's Day. It is a little bit of... Yeah, like, get up, yeah. go to work, curbside, go home, get it's, up, go to work, curbside, <laughs> go home. It's Memorial Day weekend. Yes. So it's kind of slow around here. We are still only do, doing curbside. Yes. We aren't, um, although we did rearrange the shop and take out the seating area in anticipation of potentially of, of eventually being open to yes. the public. Um, we are still not quite open to the public, and that is because I we checked the Tarrant County, which is the county we live in. We check the webpage, the health and human services webpage every day to see what the county's uh, status is and community spread is still substantial in our county. Yep. So, so um, you know, we're going to basically uh, follow our own game plan as to how we think we should responsibly um, address when we eventually reopen and how we reopen so mm -hmm. we're just we're playing it by ear so we we do take the county's numbers um into consideration in our personal risk assessment so right right so other than that so there aren't any real classes going on no although there is uh, an event a zoom event with marie green the designer behind the four day sweater knit along she is going to do a Zoom session with our West 7th Wool Group on June 5th at 8 p.m. Central for a 30, 45 minute Zoom talking about the four day knit along, the sweater. Um, I think she'll reveal the pattern by then. She'll talk about yarn choices, difficulty, what it's like to knit a sweater in four days, and maybe just some of her design process. We'll see. Cool. You'll have her live and in person to ask her anything you like. Very good. We'll put more details about that on our website. Everyone is um, welcome to join. Mm -hmm. Nice. Then, um, what else? Any other um, goings on we have? Well, not really. Um, we've got Memorial Day. We're not doing anything for that. We uh, can get on to talking about some new things we have in the shop. Okay, we do have some new things in the shop. We do. I just picked up a box of yarn from Madeline Tosh the other day. Oh, what was in it? Had a few skeins of a custom color that they made oh. for us. Yep. You want to talk about it? I it's can. A it's a beautiful color. This is it. Here, I have it in a lighter base. This is TML the, floating across your screen. The color is called Kraken. Uh, and yeah, yeah, we really like how it turned out. How did you choose this color, Hunter? Okay, so it turns out I really like a different... Okay, I was at the Tosh facility and I was talking about, you know, uh, Fiberfest plans or something, or maybe picking up an order. Yeah, this was <clears> supposed <throat> to be our custom Fiberfest color. Yeah, and um, Laura was there from Jimmy Bean's Wool after they had purchased them, and um, we had just this wide-ranging discussion. One of them was discussing a new custom color that we were planning and how I was struggling to come up with what color it should be. And Laura suggested, hey, why don't you just pick a pre-existing color that you like and then we can modify it. And to which I was like, oh, well, I really like Danger Will Robinson. And this is essentially a modification of that. And definitely they look different when they're side by side. But yeah, we thought it turned out really cool. Do we have one behind us? Um, I've been selling them. You've been selling them? I've been selling them. I think we're almost out. Well, can't find it. We might actually be out of Danger Will Robinson. Okay. But, but that's okay because we have plenty of Kraken. <laughs> we have it in which bases, Hunter? We have it currently. We've got it in um, Tosh Marino Light. We've got it in TML Glitter. We've got it in Impression Mohair, and then we've also got it in uh, Farm Twist and Vintage Worsted. And we're still waiting on um, Work Sock, High Twist, and Twist Light. Um, Tosh mm -hmm. is out of those bases. Right. Yeah. 
So some work, of my work, favorite bases, I right? guess. Work sock being sport, high twist is uh, fingering, and then... No, high twist. Or high is twist is DK. DK, and twist light is fingering. Yeah. Okay, but this is also DK, and then, of course, uh, TML is fingering, and just right. a single ply. Right, and I'm sure as soon as they get more of those bases in, we'll get the rest of the order. I'm mm, excited. Yep. So I like that color. You did a good job. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Tosh did a good job. So they did a good job, mm -hmm. as always. All right. Um, also, we have uh, two new publications. We have the new Making magazine, and we have the new Vogue magazine. And we heard some sad news about Vogue magazine. Yeah, apparently they're going to a biannual publication. Yeah, they're cutting down to just two issues a year. Hmm. So this is kind of, this is spring, summer 2020. It's a little thin. Um, it's very colorful. I haven't looked through it to see. It's got good patterns. These are cute. Oh, Hunter, you can make a dress. Is this crochet? Oh, can I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I it's crochet. I don't think I have that much crochet in me. Aww. All right. Yeah, it's got some fun stuff. Actually, a couple cute dresses. You got a dress right. in your future? Cool stuff. Mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. I tried it once. It didn't work out. Mm-hmm. What other new things do we have? We just got in a couple of big boxes from Malabrigo. We've got it in um, seven, uh, no new bases, but a lot. We carry a lot of bases already. So we've got seven yarn bases that came in plus uh, more roving. So, I mean, here's just a few examples that we got in, left Still in the plastic in for plastic. you. I just literally got it in the I can't uh, see it system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Ask me what colors we have in. What colors do we have? I'm not going to tell you what <laughs> colors we have in. You're just going to have to get on the website and check it out for yourself. Oh, rude. <laughs> <laughs> Another fun thing we got in are these little darning looms from Catrinkles. What it is is a little um, circular. What, did, what would you call it? a little pedestal? A small little wooden pedestal. It's all glued together. And then it comes with this little comb. And what you do, it, it also comes with um, a darning needle and a little, uh, I don't know what this is. It could be a hair tie. It could be just a, it looks like one of those pieces of tights that's been cut. Although it's it's tiny though, nobody could wear tights this small. Like a hairband maybe. Okay, but you find your sock that needs repair. You put the darning apparatus, the darning loom, on the inside with the flat edge on top. So you just kind of feel around your sock where you want to put it. So I have some wear right there that I want to... I'm actually going to um, duplicate stitch over this because it's not a hole yet. But if it was a hole, I could weave a tiny little patch with this little darning loom. And I'm not going to show you... There are instructions in there and then there are videos. So I'm not going to go over it during the podcast, but I was just going to... They fit a video in this box? No, stop. I was just going to show you how to um, put it on your project. So then you put this around so it makes it nice and tight. And then you take the little comb, which is the heddle, and you put it on the flat, the top part, right inside. I'm going to call it a hair tie. <laughs> and then you can take your needle and thread through the good stitches and then up through the heddle. Up hmm. and down, up and down, and then you can weave in and out across. And then now you have a little patch to attach. Hmm. Fun, huh? 
That's cool. It is cool. So um, we, how many of these do we have left? I feel like we have maybe like four. No, I think we've got like maybe a half dozen. We sold a couple. Maybe a couple. Yeah. Okay, I think maybe we have six left. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. Cool. I'll take it. <laughs> so you can find those on our website as well under Notions. Or type in... Um, darning loom on the search cool. on the search bar all right so that's what's new that's what's going on um do you have any finished no i don't do you i do have a finish would you finish um last weekend was the circular sock knitting machine society virtual crank in mm -hmm. which i attended makes sense you could do that from the safety of your home mm -hmm. and um it was a really cool on sat. It was a really cool event on Saturday. They did a Zoom meeting meeting all day, and they had different presenters um, take turns presenting from all across the country and even um, England. There was a frame loom weaving tour mm -hmm. of an antique frame loom shop in in London, which was really cool. I think it was London. It could have been somewhere else, but it was definitely in England. But so, and there were maybe, I want to say 250, 300 people on at the same time. And I learned some really awesome stuff and I got inspired to make one of these little forest friends on my sock machine. Nice. Um, and I just played around and I got my river to work. So I'm excited about that. Uh, this is basically just a tube and um, I started off with I have I've had the 60 canister I don't, I don't know what they're all called the cartridge right <laughs> right 60 needles on it um, and then I did every I only threaded every other one all hooks up on every other one and mm -hmm. then um, I added you can go in and pick up um, the second stitch and put it on the next one mm -hmm. so then you have all 60 so it went from 30 to 60 Mm -hmm. So that's what made um, that's what made it really small on the bottom, and I did the same thing for the neck, which I don't think actually needed it. I think next time I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do a tube. Yeah, you can just like put a piece of yarn in there and cinch it. Shut which that I way. did, I did, but I thought maybe it would be good to have a smaller um, diameter right there, mm -hmm. just because. And I, th I, th I don't think you need it. Hmm. Yeah. I think next little animal I do is going to be different. Well, it's good to learn the techniques yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, I haven't turned a heel on the machine yet, but I feel way more confident in doing that now. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So cool. that was fun to play with. Have you learned how to kitchener with it yet? No, you can't kitchener with it. But you can um, you can kitchener from the while the waste yarn is still in, which is interesting. Really? Yeah. Just kind of turn it inside out and then sew it while the waist yarn's in, and then you cut the waist yarn out. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, we also have this finished object, which is the Casapinka uh, Breathe and Hope shop. Mm -hmm. Don Ross Keys knit this one for us for a shop sample. Thank you, Don. It is beautiful. This is Madeline Tosh. Um, I forget the colors, but I think it's Twist Light. Looks like uh, Lepidoptera and uh, Cosmic. Cosmic Silver, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Good color eye. Uh, guess what, Hunter? What? Casapinka is doing another one of these. Oh, are they? Yes, June 5th through 8th. Cool. She has another shawl coming out called Hug. The Hug Shawl. Not to be confused with Huga? No, no it's just H U G. Okay. Uh, and it also takes two skeins of fingering weight yarn, two opposite colors or coordinating colors, however you want to say that. Um, so the Casapinka kits that we have will still work for those. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want me to, I can put to together more kits. Or you can choose two fingering weight yarns. Or if you have a fingering weight yarn at home, you just want to get a separate one to go with. Cool. Let me know if you want that code, and I will send you the free code. Nice. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so anything you're working on? Um, besides <laughs> video games? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, I've got some socks here, works in progress, but no progress. No progress. No pro no progress. No progress. How about you? Uh, I'm working on my hard on her sleeve sweater, blouse. I've got the back. It's a cabled blouse, short sleeve. So I've got the back, and it looks really small. It looks really skinny, but once you stretch out, once you put it on, these cables are going to stretch out and uh, fit you really well. I think it's a negative ease garment, which is my style. And this is the front. So I'm almost finished with the front. Nice. Then I will seam them together, and it's got short, sweet little puff sleeves. And you have the option of um, doing a, a heart in intarsia on the sleeve. Mm -hmm. I might. I might not. Might save it for another one. Cool. This is Anzula's Lunaris in the charcoal color, I believe. And I still haven't finished. I've been alternating skeins because it is a hand-dyed yarn. And there is some difference in yeah, the color. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, even even the same skein, uh, my swatch is even striped. You can, I did swatch. So even in the same skein, you can see that it's very different. Yeah, that's why we typically recommend if you're working with hand dye and you're making a garment like this, alternate skeins. Yeah. But I'm almost to the end of these two skeins, so the sleeves will be maybe a little lighter, but I don't think mm -hmm. I'll have a problem with that. And what's also a good idea is if you're working with a project, say like it's four plus skeins of yarn, uh, put the skeins down before you get started and maybe you can organize them from lightest to darkest and then you can alternate between those but it'll make it more consistent as well. Yeah, I kind of did that. I started with the darker one on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I did actually a couple rows of the dark before I started the light. So we'll see. Cool. It hasn't been that annoying. Um, usually it is annoying for me, alternating colors, because you have to do, deal with two skeins of yarn. Yeah, that's the only thing is the whole two So, skeins, but, it, but if you're used to color work, then you're used to reaching down and flipping your two yarn balls. So that's just what I've been doing. I put both uh, skeins, or both balls of yarn in this bag, and then every time I um, switch colors or switch skeins, I just flip the bag around and flip the bag around. Yep. So yeah. So that's I'm almost finished with that. I'm really excited. Maybe by next week or next podcast, it'll be a finished sweater. Cool. And then we can move on to the next one. Excellent. Um, anything you're looking forward to knitting? No. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking forward to? I don't know. Selling more yarn. Selling more yarn. <laughs> getting back to normal normalcy would be nice there, uh, it's, but I, I don't know that uh that's going to be an there'll option. be a new normal yeah it's things um you know as uh amy mentioned earlier we've been kind of changing the layout of the shop basically we're kind of changing places where formerly people would sit to more display yeah. more product so maybe you can do a little put a little video in there in mm -hmm. here maybe so so you so, know yeah, just kind of trying to adjust to the new reality that yeah we're all having to deal with all right we have a giveaway do we yeah Ooh. you want to go yeah, grab that it. giveaway all right so we have we have a giveaway uh last episode's giveaway was for two skeins of twisted owl sock yarn super sock four ply Mm -hmm. 7525 merino nylon um, we th originally we thought it might be fun to make a breathe and hope shawl but you could also do the new huck shawl that's coming out or you can do anything you want any other project you want because anything. it's your yarn it's your yarn you can do whatever you want with it so um, i don't even remember 
last week's question, but right. I'm going to look it up. And I will bring up the number generator. 65, 65 comments. People want those skeins of yarn. I would too. That's, yeah. That's good. It's a good prize. Okay. Number we have oh my is God, no. 61. <laughs> we'll be here for a while, okay? Just go backwards. Does it work like that? I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll try it both. I'll try it backwards. You go forwards. Okay. Let me pull it up. <laughs> All right. Then it's Diane Shaw. Congratulations. Congratulations, Diane. You're the winner. Let us know if you want to curbside pick it up or if you want us to mail it to you. We can do either. Cool. All right. This week's prize is a skein of Kraken. That's Custom right. color and vintage. You can make a lovely hat. You could do some color work with it. You can add it to a fade. You can do some contrast color work with it. Um, very nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I did see, I saw a pattern in here. In here. Uh, I don't know how much it takes, but it was for, um, it was for Tosh Vintage. Anyway, go ahead, Hunter. What is our question going to be? Oh, um... Okay, so I guess either what are or what had you planned on doing Memorial Day weekend prior to... Oh, that's kind of sad. That is. That's kind of sad. Um, How about what did you, how'd you spend your Memorial Day weekend? Sure, yeah. Okay. All right, so how did you spend your Memorial Day? I'm like feverishly looking for this pattern that I saw. Uh -huh. I don't know that I will find it. Maybe it wasn't even in here. Maybe this is all a figment else. of your imagination. It might have been. Mm -hmm. Could have been. Could have been. All right. So, yeah. So, thank you so much for watching. This is just such a pretty background. I really love it. Good job, Dawn. Um, cool. And good job, Bronwyn from Casapinka. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Yep. Bye.